comprehension. In this lesson, we're going to talk about language input and output, listening and reading. Input, this is what we hear and read in a language. Output is what we say and write in a language. Understanding concepts. Dr. Stephen Krashen is arguably the most respected researcher in the field of second language acquisition. And to quote him, people learn languages by understanding messages. It's a really basic concept, but I believe it to be true wholeheartedly. People learn through something he calls comprehensible input. So input in that new language that we understand. And this looks different at our different levels. If you're just starting out, you might need someone to speak very slowly, use visuals, lots of gestures, and lots of repetition. As you become more advanced, this comprehensible input can look very different. Acquisition. When one truly understands the input to the extent that it becomes a language easily used and produced. And Krashen talks about the difference between learning and acquisition. It's one of his five theories and we'll explore that later, but the crash course is that learning. Those are the deliberate things that we do. It's vocabulary, it's grammar exercises, etc. Acquisition is when you're naturally getting all of that in context in a way that you understand. You've acquired that language. And he also argues people don't truly learn languages, they acquire them. Language plus one. The person who presents language makes it easy to understand while adding new concepts to move the learner skills forward. Essentially what this means is that there's a little bit of problem solving in there. So for example, if you are an intermediate learner, I highly recommend reading things like magazines or personality quizzes, graphics. There's going to be problem solving in there for you. You're going to have to think about what you're reading, but it's not going to be overwhelming. As an example, trying to read Don Quixote when you're taking Spanish 1. And this leads us to language submersion. So this is language beyond your knowledge or your skill level, and it's difficult to get anything out of it. The key to using the input to learn languages is to understand your level. Listening. Listening is the first skill we build in our new language. We can use other skills like reading because our literacy skills are transferable and often adult learners do that, but listening really comes first. Listening tools. I love audio books, Living Languages, Pimsleur, Courses that are completely audio will help train your ear to learn a language, and you'll learn the reading, what the language looks like later. Apps, Babbel, Memorize, Duolingo, I love drops. The audio and exercises accompanying physical books. Computer immersion programs like Eurotalk, Instant Immersion, um, I think Rosetta Stone, though I've not tried it, falls into that. Podcasts. U.S. government language programs, you can Google FSI and get free language courses. Anki flashcards can have sound, and Gabe Weiner does a whole lot with them. He's even got an app, and I'll link to that later. Quizlet, create your own playlist on something like Spotify. Yabla is a fantastic one, which... We'll talk about a little bit more in depth in another lesson. So comprehension, understanding. So I wanna talk about three main levels of comprehension though there's more. Beginner or level A. So I, I am gonna refer throughout the course to the ACTFL levels which are set by the American Council for the Teaching of Foreign Languages in the States and then the CEFR, the Council for your European uh, framework reference. Or I'm sorry, common European framework re for reference. I tend to gravitate towards the ACTFL, not just because I'm American, but rather because they delineate within those levels far more than I see the European scale do, though I think they're 
they're both extremely useful and good to good tools to know about. There are some past this. So your levels of comprehension, when you start beginner, you need to focus on understanding words and phrases. And by the end of this level, you should be producing words and phrases. And again, you want to go a little bit above your level and dig deep with that understanding. Intermediate starts with phrases and ends at sentences that become more like paragraphs. And that advanced level, those are extended paragraphs. Think novels, books, plays. There are levels past this where you get into specialized professional language. You know, think university lectures, that kind of thing. But I'm not exactly sure that that's relevant for most learners. Most of us stay in that, that beginner A or that intermediate B, and they're perfectly fine for our purposes. So some intermediate comprehension tips. Language plus one is crucial. Dig deeply and listen multiple times to keep getting something out of it. So intermediate resources, Anki cards, audio stories, Netflix, YouTube. Netflix has this, there's a great plugin called uh, Language Learning with Netflix. You can turn your Netflix into a language learning lab. How amazing is that? Um, songs and music. Songs and music, but used with caution. I always advise people, music is great for culture. It's great for understanding the sounds of a language. And it can be really catchy. However, I also people uh, caution people to use them with caution because remember that language is, is written in a poetic form, which is great, but it's not everyday language you're necessarily going to learn. If you try to break down and translate some of what you'll see in a song, it's not going to make a whole lot of sense. Definitely what it's about, the themes, the artists, it's great for culture. But again, use them with caution. It's far more useful to take language out of a movie that you can use in your everyday life than a song. Advanced resources. Think audiobooks, news reports, lectures, and films spoken with the target language. And one of the very best resources for developing listening comprehension is speaking to people who are native speakers of your target language. So immersive video conferencing via Skype and Google app. If you've got anyone that you can connect with, a tutor, and I know there's lots of sites that offer this kind of thing, Go ahead and do it. Get talking to people. Even a teacher who, in my opinion, doesn't allow you a whole lot of turns to talk at times can be a really valuable source of listening comprehension. I really like to record it with something called eCam on Skype. And that way I can go back and listen to the conversation. Again, there's lots of sites, but I love iTalkie because that's the site that I have experience with. You can sign up and be online, FaceTime, Google Hangouts, Skype, getting a lesson from a native speaker. Reading. At the beginning level, some activities that you can do to read, which is one of the most powerful ways to learn a language. And we talk about it in depth about one of Krashen's studies of hyperpolyglots. Practice flashcards. Those Anki cards are great. Create and read phrase books, which you'll see the lesson on phrase books if you want to make your own. Recipes. Reality, which are real life items that reflect daily life in the target culture. I think dialogues are great here, and those tend to come with beginning language courses. And a lot of podcasts have accompanying print materials. Intermediate. Practice by reading easy readers, blogs, web content. I love horoscopes. I love advertisements. I love web pages. I like graphic novels. I love to read magazine articles, newspaper articles, websites. Essentially, read for pleasure. Again, that study that you're going to see later is two people who learned, I believe one learned 18 languages and the other one learned 15 
This was all well into later in life by doing reading and input with things they like in a new language. At the advanced level, think everything that's paragraph level and beyond. Reports, research, plays, scripts, specialized books. Some reading tips. Try read Lang when you're reading online. I discovered this a few years ago and absolutely love it. Read for pleasure in your new language. Print out web pages. And I say print out because I think there's a lot of power in reading on paper. Marking it up. Use highlighters. Use pens. Write in the margins. Margins. Use post-it post notes. Read materials three and four times. This is one of the best investments once you get down some basic sounds. Again, that listening coming first. Use reading to supercharge your progress. There's a strong connection between written and spoken language. Invest a large part of language learning to reading and listening, right? That input. Plan what you will listen to and read. Allocate a certain amount of time in a day for these. Understand that this is different from reading and listening to your native language. There'll be a learning curve. You're going to have to read things multiple times. And repeating words can help you learn grammar and vocabulary. And this is what Crashin means about acquisition. So if you invest a lot of time in reading after you've learned some basic listening first, all of those difficult grammatical concepts are going to come really naturally to you. You're going to just absorb them. And as a word of thumb, as I said in an earlier lesson, and I'll repeat, we have two ears and two eyes, one mouth and one brain. So I like to get twice as much input as output. Again, if you want to go more into depth, the written materials are there for download below. See you in the next lesson.